Hi everyone, welcome to another video from Not Real Engineering and in this video we are going to talk about explicit solver from Abacus. Before we start with today's example, let me show you what is the difference between explicit solver and standard solver. So you must have heard about it. Abacus has two solvers, one is Abacus standard and one is Abacus explicit. Most of the time when we start learning Abacus, we always start with standard. But later on at some point, you will feel the need to use explicit solver. So what's the difference? First of all, Abacus standard is best for linear or non-linear static analysis. Also linear dynamic analysis. Then low speed non-linear dynamic analysis. Also some analysis which are not related to structural mechanics such as mass diffusion or electromagnetics etc. Then quasi-static temperature displacement analysis or heat transfer analysis. And on the other hand, Abacus Explicit is very powerful in solving high speed dynamics problems such as drop test, crash test etc then Abacus Explicit can handle huge deformation. So you can simulate something like molding or drawing. Also many times Abacus Standard will not able to solve damage problems where you have a material degradation or crack propagation. Those problems also can be solved using Abacus Explicit. And finally, contact problems. As you know, in finite element, we discretize the time with some finite time increments. That time increment is mentioned as delta t. Now to get unknown values at later time, in Abacus standard, we have to solve an equation. This equation has unknown values at later time, which is y of t plus delta t. And also it has values at current time, which is y of t. So we know y of t, we know some function g, then we solve this function to find out values of y of t plus delta t, which are the unknown values at later time. But solving this equation is much more complicated. If you see what we do in Abacus explicit, over here we express values at later time is some function of values at current time. Therefore, we know everything on the right hand side of the equation. We just have to put the values on RHS and we will get unknown values. But over here, we have to solve this equation somehow. But this is very simple and straightforward process. Good thing about this is it doesn't require convergence check. On the other hand, Abacus standard, we have to have convergence check. One downside of Abacus Explicit is time increment has to be very small, but in standard time increment can be large. Not necessarily it will be large for every problem, but it can be. And if you see advantages of Abacus standard, first of all, it can solve true static equilibrium. In Abacus Explicit, we always have to have dynamic analysis. We can't do true static analysis. There are ways to get static solution using dynamic analysis, but it will not be the true static analysis. Then secondly, in Abacus standard, large number of element types are available. So you can solve wide variety of problems. It can also solve large variety of non-structural problems such as diffusion analysis. And it is unconditionally stable. So if you get the solution, it will be the correct solution. On the other hand, for Abacus explicit, it can handle large discontinuities. That is a huge advantage when you solve crash problems or problems involving fracture. And it is best for impact, buckling, wrinkling, material failure and cracking. Now let's go into today's problem. Today we are going to model this geometry. This is made from rubber or a polymer. So it is very soft and it can undergo large deformations. That's why we are using Abacus Explicit. How I'm going to model this is I'm going to draw this sketch and we will revolve this sketch by 360 degree around this axis to get a 3D model which looks like this. Then we will fix the bottom face and we will apply a displacement boundary condition on top face and we will compress it in this direction. To tell Abacus to use explicit solver, we have to use dynamic explicit step in step module. As you can see over here, explicit solver will only have dynamic step. Therefore, we have to define step time. And it is the most important question on how to decide step time. We just want static solution, but still we have to give some step time. If we give value of step time as too large, like 10 seconds or 20 seconds, then Abacus will take a long time to do that simulation as the time increment has to be very small. And if you give value of step time too small, like 0.001 seconds, then the effect of inertia may come into picture, which you don't want because you want a static solution. Therefore, somehow you have to optimize this value. And that you can do by looking at kinetic energy of the system. That I will show you when we go into Abacus CA. Then we will mesh part using sweep technique. 
and we will use 3D stress explicit elements. Now I know this problem can be done using axisymmetric formulation. We don't have to model it into 3D. If we do it axisymmetric, we will save a lot of computational time. But I already have many videos in this channel where we use axisymmetric formulation. Therefore, in this video on purpose, I'm going to use 3D modeling, but definitely you should do it with axisymmetric formulation. And for this polymer, we are going to assume hyper elastic material model where we will use Ogden model with three constant values. And these are the material parameters for EPDM material. EPDM is a kind of a rubber or a polymer. And I took these values from this paper. In this paper, they talk about how to get these values from experiments. And I tried to give all the dimensions what you need to draw this figure, you can just pause this and check all the dimensions. Okay, let's start with Abacus CA. First set up your working directory and then let's start with the part. It should be 3D, shape solid and type revolution. Now this is the axis of revolution. So you have to draw the sketch somewhere over here. As you can see, this is pretty complicated geometry. So first I'm going to create some points and these construction lines. Let's start with construction lines first. Once we have construction lines, first I will draw this bottom and top part. For that I will create some points over here first. And then you can join those points using a line. The thickness of section over here is 2 mm. Similarly, the top portion, first points. And again, join them with line. And now for intermediate part, I'm going to create some more points. You can pause the video and see coordinates of these points if you like. And then join these points. One more time, outside points. That's it. Now we just have to use this fillet tool to round the corners. You can see over here, always Radius of inside fillet is 4 mm and radius of outside fillet is 5 mm. So let's start with inside fillets. So I will give radius as 4 and I will do all the inside fillets first. And then choose fillet one more time, give radius 5 and let's do the outside fillets. That's it, done. Say OK. It will ask you to select a construction line as a center line. You can select this vertical line and angle of revolution give 360. Say OK and you can see our part is created. Then go to property, create a material, polymer. First we have to define density because this is going to be a dynamic analysis. 10 E minus 10 and then go into mechanical elasticity and hyperelastic. Over here choose strain energy potential as Ogden and input source as coefficients. Increase the strain energy potential order to 3 and then you just have to enter 6 coefficients over here mu1, mu2, mu3 and alpha1, alpha2, alpha3. So I will just enter these values from this paper. I entered those values and then you will see there are 3 more columns. These values are if your material is compressible. Our material is not compressible therefore just enter 0, 0, 0 over here. I have a separate video on hyperelastic materials and how to get these parameters. So if you are interested in that, please check out this video, link is in the description. Say OK, then create a section and assign that section to our part. Then go to assembly, create an instance. Next is go to step, create a step. Now over here you have to scroll up and select dynamic explicit. Say continue. Over here you have to give time period at 0.01. By default, nonlinear geometry will be on. Keep it on. You don't have to change anything over here. This mass scaling is also interesting topic, but I will cover it in separate video. Say OK. Next, go to load. I'm going to fix the bottom face. All U1, U2, U3, 0. And then I'm going to apply a displacement boundary condition on this top surface as well. We are going to compress it. So U2 minus 10. Whenever you use non-zero displacement boundary condition, you have to define amplitude as well. 
So for that, let's create an amplitude using this button over here. Select tabular, say continue. I'm going to create an amplitude just with two points. When time is zero, amplitude is zero. And when time is 0.01, amplitude is one. Say okay, choose that amplitude which we just created and say again okay over here. You can see now we are compressing it in vertical direction. Next go to mesh, select part over here first. When you see part in a yellow color, it means the mesh will be constructed using sweep technique. Just to check, you can go in mesh in controls and you will see over here sweep will be selected. Say OK. Next, let's assign the element type to our part. Over here, you have to change this to explicit 3D stress. No need to change anything else. Say OK. Then let's seed the part with 0.5 and let's mesh it. I am keeping this fine mesh because we are applying large deformation. There is another video on this channel which talks about how to check quality of your mesh. So if you are interested, check that video as well. Then go to job, create a job and submit it. And now job is done. Let's go into results. I just hide the mesh so that it will look better. And you can see the deform shape. You can animate time history as well. Now one important check we should do to understand if the results are quasi static is go into this create XY data go into ODB history output and plot kinetic energy and internal energy. If you plot them, you can see over here internal energy is increasing exponentially. This is because of the deformation and kinetic energy is almost zero. So if kinetic energy is negligible compared to internal energy, then we can say the results are quasi static. If you like this video, please show your support by subscribing to this channel, which will give me motivation to create more educational videos like these. You can also go to channels playlist tab and here you can see all the videos with similar topics combined together. For example, let's say if you're interested in ANSYS tutorials, you can go to this ANSYS tutorial playlist and see all the videos from this playlist. All the codes and files which I use for these videos are also available for you to directly download from this channel's GitHub profile. The link of this profile is given in the description box below. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching. Thank you.